the way you are being tracked around the web and in your favorite apps is under threat. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's good news for everybody. I'm Nate Langson. Let me explain. Google said this month that it's going ahead with an experiment to phase out cookies, the more than two decades old system that lets advertisers follow you around the internet. It's impossible to overstate just how reliant pretty much every website you visit is on cookies, or how inherently flawed cookie technology actually is. Let's take a classic example. You decide you want to buy a new dining table for your home. So you visit a few online retailers, look at special offers, do some price comparisons maybe, and then decide ultimately on the right table for you and your kitchen. For the next few weeks though, it seems like every website you visit is trying to give you an ad that says, hey, I hear you're in the market for a dinner table. Look at this one, maybe buy this one or this one. And this example reveals two flaws. One, I've already bought the dining table, so why am I continuing to see ads about them? And two, who gave website A permission to website B to try and sell me something based on what I was looking at on website A? Now this latter point was intended to be addressed in Europe by means of what's now a near constant stream of prompts to accept cookies when we visit a website. Anyone in Europe will know how effective that's probably not been. A better, smarter cookie system would be one that could maybe see that I've already bought that dinner table, but determine, well, he's bought the table, so maybe let's advertise some plates to put on it, or an oven, or some dinner. And an even smarter system, and more private one, could do all that, but without letting advertisers or websites know that I was shopping for a dinner table in the first place. It's along these lines that Google said it's thinking as it moves to get rid of cookies and why it wants to pilot something called Federated Learning of Cohorts, or FLOC for short. My esteemed colleague Alistair Barr put it very succinctly in a recent newsletter. Google's FLOC replaces individual identifiers with a system that puts users into groups or cohorts based on common interests. Google's Chrome browser will then track sites visited, but that data will be kept on users' devices, and only the information about the larger groups they're in will be shared for advertising. To translate this super, super broadly into the context of my earlier example, it'd be like your web browser knowing that you were shopping for a dinner table, but an advertiser only knowing to display an ad to you that has something to do with kitchens or furniture. So much is riding on a successful replacement to cookies. Google, for instance, generates more than $100 billion in annual revenue from digital ad sales, and Facebook isn't far behind with about $84 billion a year. The two of them alone account for about three quarters of all money spent globally to advertise on the web every year, according to the World Advertising Research Council. As the world's internet users become more aware of the role tracking and profiling plays in keeping their favorite websites and services free, the more it's emboldened companies who don't rely on advertising to use that awareness to their advantage. It's why you see Apple going all in on promoting the privacy offered by its phones and computers, and why you see Facebook taking out full-page newspaper ads in the US to explain why tracking is a good thing and helps keep things free and sustainable as a business. So Google's probably right to be exploring a better alternative to cookies, which pretty much everyone agrees are long overdue a reckoning. But with so much money and literally basically all the world's biggest technology companies reliant on the outcome being foolproof, expect Flock to be just one of many candidates for cookie killer. While they figure that out, you can tell me how you would kill cookies. What's the best system to replace them with? Let me know in the comments on social media. For Quick Take in London, I'm Nate Langson.